Another is brand. We will grow as a management company and build a brand synonymous with quality. Um, this was 1986, and we made the decision to get out of owning hotels. We are a management company. So I'm going to take your hotel. Let's say it's a $350 million property in, let's say, Maui. And I'm going to run that for you, and I'm going to charge you a percentage off the top. Of every dollar you make coming in, I'm going to take a percentage of that, and then I'm going to have incentive fees. The better you do, the better I do, and we're all happy, right? What a great business. Great business model. And I'm not worrying about real estate, real estate prices, the market. Because when you talk to owners, that's what they're worried about. They're worried about their debt. They're worried about their real estate prices. Because that's big bucks, right? You're talking millions and millions of dollars. How can I focus on people like Art and guests like that group coordinator if I'm worrying about real estate prices? I can't do that. You can't do that. It's a different business. Okay, so we chose not to be in that business. We have one property where we still have dollars and cents in totality. Anybody know which hotel that is? Not the Georges Saint. That's a, it's kind of, but I'll explain that maybe. As Four Seasons as a whole, the only hotel that we fully own is Four Seasons Vancouver. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Now, Four Seasons as a company is owned by Prince Al-Walid and Bill Gates, so Cascade and Kingdom, which are their two uh, operating arms, okay? So Izzy, let's see, three years ago, sold, sold the company and took it private, okay? So it was publicly traded. Bill Gates and Prince Al-Walid said, look, we'll, we'll buy all the stock and we'll take the company private, and it's just the three of us, okay? So His Royal Highness owns 45%, Bill Gates owns 45%, and Izzy owns 10%, and he controls everything. Great business model. He's a clever guy, isn't he? <laughs> Can you imagine coming up with that as a concept? So, um, Prince Al-Walid, yeah, he owns George Shank. I, th I think I heard you say George Shank over there. Um, Four Seasons Whistler is owned by Cascade, so that's owned by Bill Gates. So there are, there are properties that are owned by them as individuals. So our, our brand name has become synonymous with, with quality. You hear it in movies, you read it in books, well, we're not going to the Four Seasons, right? Or we are going to the Four Seasons if it's a positive, okay? And that kind of cachet, I mean, that's just, I'm sure Izzy just bathes in it every time he goes to the movies and goes, oh, Four Seasons again, it's great. All right, goals, beliefs, and principles. Wanted to talk about this a little bit. There's some duplicity with some of the four pillars, but they, these go into a little bit more detail and give maybe a little bit of a different perspective. Who we are. That's pretty important to understand as a, as a hotel, as a single cell, and as a company, who we are. We've chosen to specialize within the hospitality industry by offering only experiences of exceptional quality. How do you define exceptional quality? Who wants to throw a couple of parameters out there? How do I know I'm running a, an exceptional quality hotel? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there are some triggers out there that tell us. They give us a benchmark, right? To say, okay, yeah, we seem to be doing okay. Go ahead. Repeat customers, yeah, that's huge, huge. Right, comment cards, online cards. We, we we take all that information. We come out with a number, give us a little bit of a report card. There was a hand up over here somewhere. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a heck of a trick, isn't it? Especially in a city hotel. But we managed to do that. But we've got to wait for somebody to tell us. Yeah, that experience was unforgettable, right? And that's really it's what we're looking for is that feedback. Somebody over here. So how do you measure that versus the competitors? Uh-huh. So the, the customers tell us that. They write letters, TripAdvisor, those kind of things. What about other agencies that tell us that? Condé Nast, yeah? 
Yeah. Award ratings, stars, diamonds, those kind of things is a big one. <clears throat> it's one that hoteliers spend too much time focusing on. You focus on it when you've got the five stars and diamonds. When you don't have it, you don't focus on it at all. <laughs> then there's the hotels that are four and they want to be fives and it drives them crazy. That was actually an ongoing or a running little bit of a battle between uh, Four Seasons Maui and Four Seasons Hualalai. <clears throat> Maui has five stars and five diamonds and Hualalai was always five diamonds and four stars. And it drove them nuts. And they'd call us, so how was your average rate last night? Well, not as much as yours, because we're a bigger hotel, but how many stars do you have? <laughs> Arr, the stars. <laughs> it was fun. Just friendly jousting between the colleagues, right? OK, so how, how we define that and how we get that feedback, there's a couple of other things just to, to point out. One is um, star reports. Okay, industry rev par, right? We know where we are in our competitive set, right? And we spend a lot of time managing that owners and asset managers. That becomes a huge topic of conversation, how you're doing in rev par, because at the end of the day, that's the one number you can say, okay, that's how we're doing in our marketplace. And it's a critical factor for us in every, every hotel, right? Not just us. So there's that. The other one is that you haven't mentioned is employees. Okay, and for me, it's the biggest one because at the end of the day, if I have the best employees, I'm going to have the best service. And I have the best service, I have the best product. Okay, so how you retain your employees, how you take care of your employees is huge. So we look at factors like turnover, okay, as a, as a key defining number. Very difficult to put that into one number, but we have the lowest turnover in the industry. In Four Seasons Vancouver, we're 18%. Last year, in a recession, it was only 18%. Many hotels will run 40, 50, 60% turnover, which is tough to get a service to the point, how are you going to do exceptional service when half of your people are brand new? That's really difficult, right? So that's a big one there. <clears throat> um, our objective is to be recognized as the company that manages the finest hotels, resorts, and residence clubs wherever we're located. So it's all about the marketplace, right? Wherever we are, we want to be the best hotel. We create properties of enduring value using superior design and finish. What does that mean? Some of this is in marketing speak, so we have to translate. <laughs> what is, what's that? High quality materials, yeah. yeah. If you walk into don't want to speak badly of a, of a competitor. If you walk into the new Fairmont Pacific Rim, there are some things they've done exceptionally well from a finished perspective. And then there's some stuff you look at and go, oh boy, that's not going to last. <clears throat> God bless them. Hate it when that happens. We're all in the hands of designers, guys. Um, so we build beautiful hotels, right? You walk into our hotels and you go, wow, this is, um, this is really nice. Right, you automatically get that feeling. So you can build a beautiful hotel. You're going to be successful? Superior finishes, is that it? Absolutely not. Any of you can build a beautiful hotel. It's easy. You go to the bank. You get in the li line. It says $300 million loans. You just get in that line. You get to the end of the line. You say, I'd like my $300, please. And they say, sure. <laughs> Count out the cash, there you go. You go hire an architect, you go hire a designer, construction company, build your hotel. You're going to fail miserably, right? Because it's not about building. It's not about creating a mecca. You fill it with people that are able to give you an ethic of personal service. It's the heart.